Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org. That's me, the little shaman. Today I wanted to talk to you about cognitive dissonance. This is something I get asked about all the time, so I thought we could talk about it on the show today. Cognitive dissonance is something that you've probably heard about when reading or researching about narcissistic relationships. A lot of people talk about it, but no one ever really seems to explain what it is exactly. Cognitive has to do with thinking and perception, and dissonance means things that clash or don't go together. If it helps, you could think of dissonant music, where something is played off-key or somebody's just like banging on the keys on the piano. Basically, cognitive dissonance is what happens when the mind holds two pieces of information or belief systems that contradict each other or otherwise clash. A good example is smoking. There's always cognitive dissonance involved in smoking. People want to smoke, but they also know that smoking is bad for them. In order to relieve the stress created by this clash, this paradox, people come up with rationalizations that create a bridge between these two things. They might say something like, yeah, smoking is bad for you, but so are a lot of things. Or they might say, well, we all gotta die sometime. Basically anything can kill you nowadays, and things like that. This helps them mitigate the information in a way that they can deal with it, because if they can't do that, then they can't continue to smoke, and they don't want to stop. The reason there is stress at all is because, as you can see, one set of information cancels out the other one or contradicts it, and in order to retain both pieces of information, rationalizations and compromises must be reached within the brain. Otherwise, the brain would not be able to justify smoking, and doing so would create a very stressful situation. This is how cognitive dissonance works in every situation, not just with smoking. In any situation where there is contradictory information that must be accepted, there is cognitive dissonance. People who smoke must accept that smoking is bad for them. In this day and age, it is not possible to deny or disprove that. They must also accept the fact that they smoke and that they want to smoke. Because these two things cannot be denied, and they also cannot be accepted, the brain must come up with a way for them to coexist. This is where cognitive dissonance comes into play. It creates a bridge between these two things so that they can exist simultaneously. A person who smokes can't say, smoking is not bad for me. They also can't say, I smoke because I don't care if it hurts me. Neither of these things are true, so the brain comes up with a compromise. It creates a way to reduce the impact of the unpleasant or contradictory information. It does this because the person in question wants to keep smoking. We see the same mechanism at work in narcissistic relationships. When someone is in a relationship with a pathologically narcissistic person, no matter what kind of relationship it is, whether it's parent and child, whether it's friends, whether it's romantic, there's a lot of contradictory information that must be held in the brain. For example, on one hand, the person wants to continue the relationship. On the other, they know it's abusive and they should leave. Just as with someone who smokes, they experience stress because they know they're doing something that is harmful or unsafe. Unlike smoking, though, there is a secondary threat tied to the contradictory information. If someone is abusing you, it means they don't value you. If someone doesn't value you, it means they don't care about you. However, the alternative, which would be to stop, represents what is perceived as a more dangerous threat, and so the contradictory information is mitigated with a bridge of cognitive dissonance. Piece of information number one, I love this person. Piece of information number two, this person abuses me. If you accept piece of information number two, that means the relationship would either have to end or you would have to admit to yourself that you actually don't care that someone is abusing you. You don't care enough about yourself to end the relationship. Neither of these outcomes is tolerable, but you cannot deny or disprove piece of information number two. So in order to continue in the relationship as you wish, rationalizations to mitigate the unpleasant contradictory information number two are created. Such as, I deserve it. If I didn't do this, then they wouldn't do that. It's not that bad. Other people have it worse. They had a bad day. They had a bad childhood. They're drunk. They're high. They're sick. They don't act like this every day. Nobody's perfect. They would never really hurt me. As I've stated in other episodes of the show, the cognitive dissonance in this situation is definitely supported by the narcissist's constant blame shifting and projection, but it is actually not usually created by those things. 
it is created because the person wants to stay in the relationship and they go against their instincts in order to do so. This is actually a good thing because not only does it mean that your instincts are in good working order and you can trust them, but it also means the power has been in your hands the entire time. Now, in order to combat cognitive dissonance, you have to stop creating a narrative that you can live with and live with what's actually happening. There's no other way to say it. If someone abuses you, they're not good for you. That's it. The end. It doesn't matter why they're doing it. It doesn't even matter if you want to stay in the relationship or not. If you do, that's up to you. But be honest with yourself about what's going on. Some people might need to admit to themselves that this person treats them badly, but it just doesn't bother them enough to want to end the relationship or to be able to stay gone because that is the reality of the situation. If this is you, please go to the mirror, look yourself in the eye, and ask why. Why don't you believe that you deserve better? Why is it this important to stay in this relationship? Why is abuse more acceptable than being alone? If you can address these things, you can change them. I promise you. Now, I realize this is harsh, but it's also true that sugarcoating and pussyfooting around this type of thing is not going to help anybody who's in this situation. You can't crack cement with a feather duster. People in abusive situations are suffering. They are in danger. Many of them have created a wall of rationalizations and excuses around themselves just in order to be able to function. This dissonance needs to be broken through and sometimes you have to hit it like a Mack truck in order to do that. It hurts, but it's better in the end. Otherwise, the only way it gets broken through is because the abuser has done something so terrible it can't be excused or rationalized away anymore. For some people, this realization comes too late and it's their families who have to pick up the pieces because it's too late for them. So get mad at me for saying this. Hate me if you need to, but please listen. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. Just to clarify, this episode is not about people who want to leave but can't. So if that's your situation, you don't even need to say anything. I totally get it. I understand completely. This is not about that. I take appointments online, over the phone, via text, via email, and through Messenger. So if you're interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can visit littleshaman.org to go ahead and do that. I teach workshops a few times a month, so if you're interested in seeing what we have going on with that, visit littleshaman.org and click the Workshops tab to check that out, and you can also register there as well. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you, and have a wonderful day.